What's up guys? I am sitting in the aft cabin of Desperado and I am about to do some more grinding. So I ended up grinding back here a bit, but I've got a little more grinding to do. Then I've got to clean it up and lay some glass. I'm hoping to do all of that tonight. So let's see what happens. So currently this is the aft companionway. I'm looking forward on the boat and looking down, as you can see, you know, I've got a big area that I've cut out and then I've grinded away most of the bad glass. I'd probably say 80% has been grinded away, but I still need to grind a little bit right there, a little bit over there, probably a little bit over here. And then, you know, just kind of go through by hand and also hand sand it a little bit and then clean it up and we'll lay some glass. This was the extent of the wet balsa down here. As you can see, the balsa stringer starts right here and it's only about four inches wide. It goes the entire length of the boat. I don't see any Kevlar back here, so the Kevlar must start a little bit more forward. I need to cut some balsa to fit in that spot there. Unfortunately, I don't have any excess Divini cell and there's a little bit of missing Divini cell right here, so I might just fill that with a little bit of balsa. But other than that right here, a little bit more grinding, thickened epoxy and glass, it'll be good. Looking forward to the stringer, you guys can see, you know, there's some tabbing that came delaminated. I need to grind that back and re-tab that. The interesting thing though, from what I can see, it looks like they tabbed over gel coat here, which, you know, is a no-no. Just interesting to me. Anyway, let's get sanding and grinding. All right, so I'm back in the RV. I got everything sanded down adequately, you know, enough that I feel like it's gonna be a good repair. I went ahead and vacuumed everything, obviously, and now I've just gotta cut some glass, and I am gonna remember the peel ply this time. So I've gotta cut glass, peel ply, and balsa. Then I've gotta get everything ready, including wiping down everything with alcohol. There is gonna be one more step that I'm gonna do with this one that I didn't do with the last one, but I'll explain that to you guys as I do it. So let's get cutting some glass. All right, guys. So what I think I'm gonna do is I have to wipe everything down. Obviously, I haven't done that yet. Basically, because I need to sit here to glass that area. I can't really clean this area because as soon as I clean it, I'm just gonna dirty it up again by sitting on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this stuff up in sections. I'm gonna lay this part up here. I'm gonna clean it, lay it up. The fabric's gonna basically stop like right here. Because I have a bunch of working time with this epoxy, I'm gonna leave that part laid up, but then I think from up there, I could lay the part that I'm sitting on up, but I'd have to, you know, with this part half laid up, I would have to clean this area, lay up the glass, and then put peel ply over the whole thing. It's too awkward for me to access this area from up there or even from in there. So I think this is how I'm gonna do it. Let's get to it. So what I did differently this time is I actually wetted out all of the surface with thinned epoxy, thinned with denatured alcohol. And what that's going to do is that's going to help create a better bond to these damaged surfaces. I then filled all the gaps with thickened epoxy and then followed that up with glass and regular epoxy. Alrighty guys, it has been about 24 hours and this glass back here has set up and I think we're ready to peel the peel ply and see how I did. Now, before I go into, you know, what I did back here and everything, it's not gonna be perfect. I think there's gonna be some mistakes. This was actually the hardest glassing job that I think I've ever done. And that was mainly just because of access. You know, it's pretty small back here. And then once you start trying to glass the whole thing, there's really nothing for you to step on. There's really nothing for you to actually use as support for yourself. So take that, combine it with the fact that it's already a small area and, you know, access was just absolutely horrible. It was hard to film. I wasn't able to get the whole job on film because once I finally got into it, there was epoxy everywhere. I ran out of gloves halfway through and it was, it was a mess. It really was. But I think I did an okay job. Let's see how I did. 
If there are any mistakes, I can always go back and fix those mistakes, but work in smaller areas so it'll be easier to do. I think the biggest issue with this glass job is I tried to bite off more than I can chew. It's too big. You know, I should have worked on half, one half set up and then done the other half. I should have done it that way rather than trying to do the entire thing in one night. I think that was my biggest mistake. But let's see how it looks. So there's the peel ply. As you guys can see, let's go ahead and peel that up. Honestly, for what it's worth, it doesn't look half bad. I was worried about having some void spaces here, so it doesn't look like it doesn't look like I have any. There are some low spots, but that's thickened epoxy down there. There's no air in there. So that's good. Moving on from the aft section repair, I went ahead and started making the cut for the forward section repair. All right guys, so I definitely didn't want to make the mistake of cutting out too little this time, so I don't believe that I did that. I think I've got more than enough room to work, but this is going to be a pretty confined working area again because of because of this right here. But luckily, it's only a section that's probably, you know, 12 inches by 2 feet. So, I've got to go ahead and cut out like this section right here. Lay some new balsa in glass it over. Bob's your uncle. All right, guys, it has been about a week since the last time you saw me working on this boat. I've had the air conditioning running and, you know, drying out the air in here. And I just wanted to let the bow of this boat dry out and it has. So we've got this big hole cut out so that I can access the damage down below. And let me show you what's going on down there. So as you guys can see, I've cut out the top layer of laminate. I've pulled out the wet balsa went all the way down to good balsa and just let everything dry, you know, for about a week while the air conditioner was running and dehumidifying the air. So everything is looking pretty good. I've got to go through and do a little bit of sanding. I'm just going to do that by hand. I think that's going to be the easiest way to do it in this small area. And then I want to sand those cracks a little bit right there. And then I'm just going to come through, lay new balsa and new laminate really over this entire area. So probably about, I would say a foot and a half wide by about three feet long. One of the things I did notice that I wanted to mention to you guys is right here, if you guys can see that, this is actually a repair done by the previous owner. So I think this boat ran aground probably hard on a rock or something, and that caused this whole area to get wet because either seawater or lake water, this boat did sail the Great Lakes, so it could have been lake water, wet out this entire area and caused the damage right here. Now, the previous owner did attempt to fix it, but they only fixed it from the outside, but they didn't bother to come in here and make sure you know they dried out the balsa or replaced the balsa that got wet. So that's what you know caused this damage here. As you guys know, the damage back there in the aft section of the boat that was caused by rainwater actually, not necessarily seawater or lake water coming in from below, leaks from wherever, and then pooling in the bilge. That pooled water basically caused osmosis from the inside out, and then the laminate ended up cracking because of the pressure from the trailer. So I just thought that was interesting. The bow damage was a different cause. I mean, it was still water, but it was a different type of cause than the damage in the aft section of the boat. Anyway, let's get to work. We're back in the fiberglass and balsa cutting studio. There you have it guys. Got the surfaces prepped and sanded. 
and I've got the balsa all fitted in there. Obviously it was kind of an irregular shape and these little pieces down here I had to sand so that they're thinner. Go over that previous repair. But it'll hold. So gonna go ahead and make some thickened epoxy and glue all this down in here and then glass over the top and we should be good. What's up guys? It has been a couple days since I finished the glassing in the bow there and let's take a look. That's yeah, looking pretty good. Alrighty guys, I am happy with that. Looks pretty good and solid in the areas where I need it to be. Sounds good to me. I like it. Now obviously I'm not a professional and these glass jobs aren't perfect but I think they are going to be more than good enough for what I need them to do, which is to just repair the damage that was there and get this boat back to being as strong as it used to be. On each of these glass jobs, there are some voids around the edges a little bit, but keep in mind that I actually kind of overshot those edges, like the glass goes out farther than where it really needs to be. So yeah, I, I'm not really too worried about them. It's really good and solid where it needs to be, and that's gonna be you know around the area that actually need to be repaired. So yeah, let's go ahead and go outside the boat and talk a little bit more about you know what immediate projects are gonna be happening on this vessel. All right, guys. So winter has finally hit the Florida Keys, and it is in the high 70s. It is just absolutely beautiful here today. So I just wanted to end this video out here in the sun, in the nice weather, and the boat behind me. So let's real quick talk about what's next. Now obviously I've got to go ahead and rebuild the floors that I cut out. That's definitely going to be on the list coming shortly. But before I do that and before I get the trailer back underneath the boat, I want to go ahead and remove all of the bottom paint there so i'm going to be doing that and i'm going to be trying a paint stripper from total boat you guys will see that in the next video so yeah that's going to be what's immediately on the docket removing that bottom paint because i want to inspect the hull from the outside just to make sure there's not any damage that i don't know about that that bottom paint is hiding so that's going to be a you know a good next step after that i'll probably go ahead and rebuild those floors that i cut out that's going to be a pretty big project but not too too hard once those floors are in everything structurally sound i'm going to start working on the trailer which is out in my front yard right now and basically what i'm going to do to the trailer is make it so that it will cradle the boat better and not put any pressure points um you know on it like it was doing so yeah that's the immediate future you know removal of the bottom paint rebuilding of the floors and then restoring the trailer and putting the trailer back under the boat all right guys that's it if you enjoyed this one please leave a like leave a comment down below subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell if you want to know each and every time we drop a video see you guys i've got it right and i got it wrong but i learned my lesson hanging on come sit here with me by the fire and let it